No, how's it going, Wormhole? Make some noise! <laughs> Welcome to Comedy Planet. We do this every first Saturday. I'm your host, Derek Marshall. How are you guys feeling? I was going to say, two people up at the front. Mom, Dad, how are you feeling? There we go. Don't worry, that is actually my mom and dad. Give it up for them. Yeah! Now let's hope they don't hate me after these jokes. <laughs> okay, so I always like to test my audience. Every single time I do this, I like to test my audience, see how cool you guys are. So recently, I was driving and I saw a sign that said youth boxing. It was a gym, it made me go inside. The sign said youth boxing, but it was bullshit. They didn't let me fight any children. I'm arguing with the manager like, sir, your sign clearly says youth boxing. Now bring me out a black eight-year-old because I like a challenge. Okay, the people that laugh know how hard it is to fight a black eight-year-old. <laughs> the people that didn't, didn't go to third grade with me. That's fine. Uh, so, uh, my ex-girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend was like the Batman of hand jobs. Because most nights, she'd be out giving them to car thieves and drug dealers. <laughs> I know, I feel the same way as you guys do about it. Like, baby, you gotta stop. And she'd be like, I'm the 10th grade girlfriend the city deserves. <laughs> See, that was a very deep Dark Knight reference, and I feel like audience didn't give me enough love for it. I appreciate it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's validation. You can't. <laughs> Okay, okay, you guys feel good. Um, so I think a lot about the zombie apocalypse and how I would survive it. Like, really quick, ma'am, how would you survive the zombie apocalypse? Would, would not? Would good job. I like a lady who knows she would die immediately. <laughs> she was like, they got me coming out the shower. Good job. <laughs> Sir, how about yourself? How would you survive the zombie apocalypse? Uh, they would starve if they would come out of you. Oh, thank you? I don't, is he calling me slim? Either way. I feel attractive, thank you. <laughs> well, um, I'll tell you how I would survive the zombie apocalypse. Prostitution. Okay, hear me out. Zombie apocalypse, you're gonna need what? Water, food, shelter. Now, I can't get any of those things, but I know there's a strong man who already has them. <laughs> really quick, really quick, uh, everyone, just a poll. How many people in here um, have held a gun? How many people in here have held a dick? You go with what you know, is what I'm saying. I'm gonna survive and my grandchildren are gonna write stories about me. How did your dad, how'd your granddad survive the zombie apocalypse? Well, it was easy. He was strong, he was fast, and he had the softest hands in Southeast Georgia. So um, I'm doing this joke. It's like uh, one of the, my new favorite jokes. Uh, so I'm a big fan of white privilege. Woo! Thank you. Every, every time I do that joke, everyone tenses up. And there's one guy who's like, oh, it's sweet. It's, um, it's pretty, I was going to say, you don't turn down free pizza. You're like, like I'm a fan of uh, white privilege. I'm a big fan of it. But I always like to tell people, I think if you could borrow white privilege, it would taste like coconut water. Or, or, for the people in the audience who've never had coconut water, Fiji water. See, a lot of people are like, damn, that does taste better than regular water. <laughs> like, um, one thing that I like, but I'm upset at uh, white privilege for the simple fact that, like, it took away a privilege that I didn't even know I lost. Like, I'm not allowed to angry tip anymore. Like, like if I go to a restaurant and someone's just shitty and my bill is $10 and I leave them $10.25, they're not thinking, oh man, I was an awful server. They're thinking, he probably only had $10.25. <laughs> so now I still tip regularly, but I'll draw a dick on the receipt. All right, you guys, welcome to Comedy Planet. How are you feeling? We have so many amazing comedians. We got a few guys that came down from Atlanta. We got, 
hometown favorite, Stephen Mays and Chris's Lane. Give it up. Give it up for yourselves, you guys. Yeah. Now make sure you tell everyone they can watch the live stream of this at Wormhole Bar slash live stream. But I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Up next, your first comedian. He is a very funny guy, local comedian. Show him all the love in the world. Give it up for Mr. Stephen Mays. What is up, Wormhole? How are y'all doing? All right, I see some of y'all are drinking. I just want to say when y'all are driving home, please be safe. You don't want to get a DUI. I already have a couple of those, and they fucking suck. Last one I got, though, was bullshit, because I knew I was too drunk to drive, so I let Jesus take the wheel. But judging from the ditch I woke up in, that motherfucker had way more to drink than I did. I'm glad y'all found it humorous. The cop didn't. The cop was like, oh, Jesus took the wheel. Where is he now? It's like, you haven't heard the word, bro? Jesus is everywhere. It's like, well, you can spend some time with him in county. If you've never been pulled over for a DUI, let me give you some do's and do nots. Mainly don't. Uh, when you get pulled over, the cop will probably say something like, sir, do you know why I pulled you over? Don't do what I did and just go, mm, and then stick your hands down your pants. Because then they'll pull you out of the car and he'll say something like, sir, you smell like alcohol. Again, don't do what I did and just go, better than weed not end up in the same place for both of those. You've been to jail once or twice too, I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know why I fucking bought this, but uh, paid for it, so I'm going to finish it. I don't know if y'all just heard my luck, though. It's a really bad logic for me. I'm likely to get a prostitute that turns out to be a dude, and I'll be like, paid for it, so I'm going to finish it. <laughs> just not in my eyes, Daisy. So I got out of a relationship a while back, and I'll never forget this girl, because she had the bumpiest nipples I've ever seen in my life. Every time I slept with her, if I closed my eyes, I thought I was licking a star crunch. I really wish I could have read Braille at the time, because it looked like it could have been a really interesting story. Maybe the secret formula to Coke, or maybe just a warning sign. Like, this bitch is fucking crazy. Actually, she was Jewish, it would have been the other way around. If I read her nipples this way, it would have sounded like Yoda. Just like, mmm, crazy this bitch is. She would have had the wisest nipples in all of the galaxy. No, but we didn't break up because of her nipples. I love star crunches. We didn't have a lot of things in common. Like, she was really into fucking other guys. And I was just like, mmm, not for me. I can do without that. Talking to a new girl now, I <laughs> asked a very dumb question. I was like, hey, what's the biggest guy you've ever been with? Without hesitation, 10 inches. Holy shit. I need to go get a hard hat with a light on top of it to go through this mine shaft he drilled out. Good Lord. There's nothing I could have said to her that made her feel as inadequate as I felt. I couldn't be like, well, my last girlfriend was as tight as a 10 year old. Cause then you gotta answer questions. I uh, gotta go knock on doors, notify people you've moved in, stay a thousand yards away from playgrounds which is my favorite place to go, because where else am I going to get clean piss? Mm. Yeah. End up on probation when you go to jail that many times, guys. <laughs> oh, man. So, politics are going on right now, and they're debating on all this crazy stuff, but they never talk about anything I care about. I want them to really start debating on things, like uh, Pepsi versus Coke, the real issues. I was at a friend's house, I was like, hey man, can I get a Coke? He's like, yeah, help yourself. They're in the fridge. Went to the fridge, full of fucking Pepsis. The only way I can tell you how disappointed I was, it's like you're about to hook up with a girl. And you've been doing everything she wants you to do. Been cleaning up dishes, haven't been farting as much. It's been, you're, you should be able to put the boom down. And she just gives you like a dry handy for 20 minutes. And you're like, come on, spit on it, put your mouth on it, do something. But she won't, because she's a fucking Pepsi. Only way it could have been worse is if it was a fridge full of RC Colas. Because that's like you're about to hook up with a girl, and she goes in the other room, you're like, oh no, she's about to put on something sexy, this is going to be fun. And she comes back in with a strap on and fucks you. RC Cola is fucking disgusting. If you drink RC Cola, next time you go to the grocery store, spend the extra dollar fifty, live like a baller. You only live once, guys. Drake told me that. It's a wider crowd. It normally kills my ethnic rooms. <laughs> uh, 
So I've been watching a lot of news lately, and the news is fucked up, but it's not because of the stories. The stories are always bad, it's the segues. Like there's always a story, it's like there's been three murders and kidnappings in your neighborhood. In other news, the president just ate a whole sleeve of Oreos, and everyone's just like, wait, what, what the fuck just happened with the murders and the kidnapping? Oh, hold on, did they say a whole sleeve of Oreos? I voted for that motherfucker. He's trying to take my Oreos and give them to everybody else, but he's eating all his. You couldn't use that fucking logic in real life. Couldn't be talking to your girl and be like, hey, uh, I think I got an STD from cheating on you. By the way, did you see that TV Carl down the street got? What does Carl need with that big old TV with them? She's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you cheat on me and get an STD? Uh, honey, that's a developing story. More on that later. Oh. Okay. So you can tell a lot about somebody by the way they tell time. If you hear somebody tell time and using months, years, weeks, don't listen to it. It's not going to be interesting. It'll be something like, it's been three weeks since I went and got in the pool. Fucking boring. If you hear somebody use days, you listen to that story. Because it's going to be something like, it's been 184 days since I sucked dick for crack. Because the only people that count time in days are people straight out of jail or in rehab. And if they're neither of those, they're autistic. And you take that motherfucker to Vegas. It says, winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> I'll leave y'all off on this. I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood. And I would get asked a lot of weird questions. They'd be like, hey, Steven, why do white people like cheese so much? It's like, I don't know. It's fucking delicious. I'll take a half ounce of Gouda if you got it. But sometimes they would ask way more serious questions. They'd be like, why did the white man create crack? Was it destroy black neighborhoods structurally and economically? And I know the reaction they expected. Like, oh no, the black people figured it out. Let me go alert the grand wizard. That's the leader of the KKK. Uh, I, these are well-written jokes. I just feel like y'all aren't well-read. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. I'm much more clever than that. I was like, didn't a black guy create peanut butter? Do you know how many little white kids are allergic to peanut butter? Most of them. But I'm glad these guys weren't thugs because they would have been like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You mean we ain't got to cap these crackers? We could just Peter Pan them? Can you imagine the news reports? Just two drive-by peanut butter rings today on Henry Street. Black guys jumping out, get jiffed, bitch, get jiffed. Hate crimes have never been so delicious. All right, y'all, that's been all my time. Yeah. Mr. Derek. That was Stephen Mays, everyone. Give it up. Yeah. Hilarious, hilarious. Get gifed. You forgot the crunchy part? Could you? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hilarious. And he is right, ladies. Uh, hand job, worst thing ever. No guy's excited about a hand job. It, thank you, guy. He's getting a hand job later tonight. And it's gonna be real dry. She's gonna hit you with that super soaker action. Cha! Ah, ah. Awful. Up next, you guys, another very hilarious comedian. He came down all the way from Atlanta, so show him all the love. Remember, you can live stream us at wormholebar.com slash live stream. Give it up for Mr. Nathan Owens! All right, thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me. It's the first time I've been to Savannah, so. Yeah. The one street is really nice. That's from where I parked. To, it's a great corner, guys. Awesome job. You guys look great. Great crowd. Bet you guys can tie your shoes and breathe, can't you? <laughs> Enjoy it. I do. I, I need to make some, some changes in my life. Had a Taco Bell employee sarcastically call me stranger the other day. Gotta, gotta switch it up. Top of the list, find a new Taco Bell. <laughs> that's what I gotta, that's the first thing I gotta do. I gotta get my life together. I'm single. Uh, yeah. That means I'm on Tinder. <laughs> yeah. Tinder's sort of like the relationship lottery, and uh, your boy's not buying any scratch-offs, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh. Zero matches so far. 
I'm not doing it right. I was really only disappointed about uh, one girl not matching with me, and that's just because her name was Justice, uh, and I love Batman. <laughs> just want to be able to tell my friends, be like, Nathan, Nathan, can you hang out tonight? No, I have a date with Justice. <laughs> that's the dream. That is, that is the dream. No, I don't think people respect me. Uh, yeah, I think people can smell on me how many show tunes I know by heart. I don't know if that's a real thing or not. Nobody's intimidated by me. Like, boyfriends aren't. Like, I, I was supposed to hang out with this uh, one girl with a group of friends at her house. In between me leaving my house and driving to her house, everybody dropped out but me. I show up at her house, her boyfriend lives overseas. They're on Skype, arguing, yelling at each other. I hear my name two or three times. All of a sudden, she just whips the computer around at me and he goes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently, this just translates to friend zone in any language. <laughs> just doesn't matter where you are. Oh man, I don't think my family respects me. Uh, I think because they all have like high school diplomas, you know? I have a GED, you know, but I finished high school in four hours, took them four years. So who's the real idiot? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, I know they don't, they don't like me because they took me bowling. Uh, I don't like bowling. It's, apparently, there are unwritten rules to bowling. I didn't know all these. Uh, apparently, you shouldn't go bowl the same time as the person next to you uh, because it's distracting. And as we all know, bowling's a real thinking man's game. I hate to do that. Bowl at the same time as this lady next to me. She turns and begins screaming at me. Um, I had no idea. I walk back to the table and my mother is furious. She's so mad. She goes, I'm going to fight her. I'm going to fight that lady. Like, my mom's a strong woman, but like her battle is more with like hypothyroid and mild depression, you know? It's not people. I guess that's, so, so we finally calm her down. I'm like, all right, mom, just what would you have said to start a bowl, you know, start a fight at a bowling alley in Buford, Georgia? She goes, I would have walked right up to that lady and I would have said, stop yelling at my autistic son. <laughs> it's like, mom, you can't joke about that kind of stuff. And she was like, joke, huh? <laughs> It's weird. It's weird. Uh, my cousin has started researching our family history, uh, which you should never do if you're white. <laughs> Figured that out. It's never anything fun. It's never like your ancestor invented the violin. It's like, nah, they owned people, and it's really sad. <laughs> That's all you find. It's really disturbing. Uh, turns out, though, we are connected to the crown on my mother's side. Uh, we... <laughs> We helped out the Scottish crown. Uh, we were mistresses <laughs> to the Scottish crown. My mom's maiden name is McNutt. <laughs> I feel like it was like Jones or something before, <laughs> before everything went down. Uh, I'm sure they kicked us out of the country. On our way over, God was probably like, we gotta do something about this family. Like, we gotta, we gotta stop them. They're just like, nah, give them a slow metabolism in tiny hands. <laughs> and it worked. No issues since. It's weird being white. Oh, it's not like that I hate it. Like, I actually enjoy being white. Like, I love Jason Mraz and bread bowls. Like, it's nothing to do with that. A lot of fun. Just weird. Just... I found Confederate money in my basement. It's a weird conversation to have. Just walk back upstairs, just toss a Ziploc bag full of Jefferson Davises on the counter. <laughs> She'd be like, hey guys, what are, what are these? My dad just goes, that is your mother's family. <laughs> and then she burst into tears. <laughs> we could not get her to stop crying. We're trying to calm her down. And my dad and I panicked, and I think we accidentally defended slavery. <laughs> We're just like, oh, mom, come on. Everyone was doing it. 
they were probably so nice. Uh, I bet everybody stayed after. It's very, very uncomfortable. Oh, it's weird. Uh, my little brother's an idiot. Uh, I'm good with transitions. Uh, he's 16, so I think it just kind of comes with the territory. <laughs> like, the high school guys are just idiots to begin with. Uh, we were watching TV, and a commercial came on for a UFC fight. And it was featuring one of the fighters, and he leans over and he goes, I don't like that guy. He's a punk. It's like, the guy who fights for a living? Like, yeah, <laughs> he's got some edge to him. I don't think there are any ridiculously nice MMA fighters out there. Just guys like after the fight, well, I'm an early child education major, and <laughs> it's the darndest thing I love to hit people, right? <laughs> What's with me? That guy doesn't exist. I took him to see the new Star Wars, uh, and as we were leaving, I was like, how'd you like it? He's like, yeah, it was really cool. And I was like, yeah, it was. And then he goes, he goes everybody looked older, except Chewbacca. That's because it it's a costume, buddy. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about that one. Just figure that one out for yourself. Uh, I live at home, uh, which is it's interesting, it's weird. Uh, one weird thing is my mom likes to have us all for dinner uh, if we're all there around the table. Uh, I missed it one time, I was taking a nap. Came downstairs a little while later, my dad was very upset. He goes, Nathan, where were you? I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. He goes, well, we texted you. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed it. He goes, well, that's really frustrating, Nathan. What if the house had been on fire? You would text me? If the house, what did that text even say? Just, hey, you up? <laughs> house is on fire, SMH. <laughs> Probs mom, LOL. What did you tell the fire department when they show up? Sir, has anybody else left in the house? I don't know. Uh, we texted Nathan, so. Says delivered if y'all want to. Fireman in there. If I had a time machine, I wouldn't use it. That's, that's a pretty common thing, right? I think uh, the problem with it would be like if I, like this current Nathan would disappoint every past Nathan of all time. Just like, even if I like took a time machine like two weeks back, he'd be like, hey, did you ever pick up that Dr. Pepper can? I'd be like, ah. You got so busy, man. You'll see. Eighth grade Nathan might be the worst Nathan to run into. That poor little chubby ball of hope. Oh, oh, that kid. Just pop up in front of him and be like, hey, man, I'm you from the future. He'd be like, how good are we at guitar? I'd be like, ah. <laughs> no. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't work. He'd be like, what team do we play for? He'd be like, oh, pro athlete thing doesn't work out. <laughs> You'll figure that one out. Uh, we're actually, we're doing stand-up now. I'd be like, oh, that's so cool, like Bill Cosby. He'd be like, <laughs> no. like ah oh, but it's really cool we got the big room when Sarah and Emily moved out so we're doing all right kid <laughs> doing okay it's weird when my sisters moved out uh, it was nice because they left all of their uh, Victoria's Secrets uh, soaps and shampoos <laughs> it was the greatest two weeks of my life it was really nice because like guys don't get like great soaps like, even the commercials are just like, do this and women will have sex with you, or just a shirtless guy screaming at you. Like, that's all we have, you know? Maybe I want to start my day with a little Japanese cherry blossom. You don't know. <laughs> little cucumber melon in my life? That's fine with me. Maybe I want my hair to feel as strong as confident as I do. <sighs> this generic man shampoo. It's ridiculous. I uh, went to a funeral a few weeks ago because uh, somebody died. Because death comes for us all, right, guys? <laughs> it's observational humor. Uh, it's just fun. It's fun stuff. Uh, no, it was a really nice service. Little, nice little funeral home. I saw something really weird on my way out. I, I saw a sign that said, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. 
what is a funeral home tweeting about? <laughs> Just had a great time with the Millers this weekend. Hashtag RIP, Dave. <laughs> Retweet for a chance to get 50% off your next purchase. Hashtag Yodo. Tough Twitter follow. Oh man, I uh, I <laughs> I'm trying to lose weight. Uh, it's, it's been fun. Um, I got turned down for a uh, diet weight loss show. Uh, so I pretty much just took my shirt off on Skype for nothing. <laughs> it's, it's just what happened. Lady on the screen was like, "Are you fat?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Prove it." And I was like, weird. She goes, give me a little twirl. So I did. I just spun. <laughs> it was just it was shirtless spinning for a stranger on Skype to get on TV. That's what it was. I started working out with a friend, and he was like, what are your goals, Nathan? What are your weight loss goals? I was like, I don't know. Uh, not this. Not that specific enough, you know. Uh, take my shirt off when I go swimming. Uh, not get guarded by the fat uncle at football Thanksgiving this year. Like, I... You know, something along those lines. I had a guy come up to me at the gym, and he goes, hey, man, hey, I envy you. I was like, all right, let's hear this. <laughs> he goes, do you have any idea how much easier it is to lose weight than to gain it? It's like, get a Super Nintendo. Like, that works for me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, I tend to kind of turn into a high school girl. Every time I start working out and dieting, it's, it's kind of bizarre. Day one, like I show up to the gym super early, really excited. Yoga pants and a sports bra, ready to really get going. Day two, I like to reward myself with McDonald's afterwards. Because uh, come on, ladies, let's not starve ourselves. And then day three, I just end up at Taco Bell at one in the morning, just crying by myself, listening to Beautiful by Christina Aguilera. I'm sorry that I'm real, you know? <laughs> Words won't bring me down. I, uh, I coach a basketball team. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, I like coaching kindergartners. It's just chaos. It's just great. It's, it's really, it's like training cats to be ducks. Like, <laughs> nobody's getting better. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're fine trying to teach them to dribble, and I had them all lined up. And I looked down at the end of the line, one kid has just dropped to his hands and knees and started pushing the basketball with his face. <laughs> I was just like, hey, Aiden, buddy, uh, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, I got really bored, coach, so I decided to be a dog. <laughs> I was like, well, uh, you can't do that, man. And he goes, why, coach? Is it against the rules to be a dog? I didn't know what to tell him, because uh, I've seen Air Bud. Not only is it perfectly legal to be a dog and play basketball, sometimes it helps. I'm like, hey man, you do you. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun day for Aiden. Uh, I do love Batman. Uh, I, uh, I, I've been pulled over in a Batman costume. <laughs> that makes you feel like a real adult. That's <laughs> just. That's a moment of clarity. The weird thing is, like, when I dress up as Batman, like, I feel very, you know, powerful. I feel like I embody the character. I feel like I kind of look like Christian Bale did when he put it on. Uh, when in reality, I look like the fake Batman in the Dark Knight running around that parking garage. <laughs> like, We're trying to help you. Those guys. Uh, I, I got pulled over. Uh, I was very upset. Uh, I was very frustrated. The cop came to the window. My attitude immediately changed because he asked me the greatest question I've ever been asked in my entire life, because I was able to respond with the single greatest thing I've ever said. He goes, what are you? I'm Batman. He goes, I'm gonna have to see some ID. I go, it's not who I am underneath. It's what I do. It defies me. Doesn't work with cops. Have to give them identification. So I pulled it on my utility belt, and I showed him. And he pulls me out of the car, and he asked me this crazy question. He goes, sir, have you been drinking this evening? I was like, no, I never drink when I'm in uniform. It looks bad. <laughs> that guy. 
So uh, we start talking, and I make a quick decision. I go, you know what? I'm Batman. He's Commissioner Gordon, rooftop of Gotham. Let's play this out, you know? Because it's not illegal to talk, talk to cops as Batman. I looked it up later. So we're playing. We're having fun. I decide I'm going to make a big Batman speech. He's going to turn his head. I'm going to disappear, just like Batman. So he's talking. I go, Gordon, wait. You don't have to worry about me. I'm not the ear that Oak would need, but I'm the one it deserves. Look over there. He turned his head. I got in my car and left, and nothing happened. Like, apparently, if you're talking to the cops as Batman, you can just leave. And I wasn't there, but I hope it went something like this. We was like, well, Mr. Owens, I think we're gonna have to. How does he do it? Guys, I'm Nathan Owens. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. That was Nathan Owens, everyone. Give it up. So hilarious. How are you guys feeling? Okay, you guys can make a little bit more noise. How are you guys feeling? There we go. Okay, uh, we got your first headliner coming up. Oh, it's this man right here. Everyone, he came all the way from Atlanta, so show him all the love in the world. Give it up for Mr. Ben Palmer! Hey, hey, what's up? What's going on? What's up? What's going on? Savannah GA in the house. Make some noise. Hell yeah. You seem to be the most proud out of all of the Savannah people. That's what's... Keep making noise. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Give it up. That was Ben Palmer, everyone. Give it up! So, so hilarious. He didn't even... Can I kill my own cow? That's how that ended. Damn. Good job. Alrighty, Comedy Planet, Wormhole, we have two more comedians left. How do you guys feel? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna bring up a very hilarious comedian. He's actually from Savannah, so I want you guys to show him all the love in the world. Give it up for Mr. Chris Islam! Cats, because I don't like any animal that has a higher self esteem than me. You guys know what I mean? You ever seen a cat? Cats just got permanent fuck you gonna do face. <laughs> Alright, that was my first joke. <laughs> That's all you guys are gonna get from me tonight. You're just gonna get Def Jam comedy featuring cats. And another thing about Mondays. <laughs> no. Wormhole. You guys alright? You guys feeling the love in the air tonight? Huh? Wormhole. I, um, I, I just realized the other day, uh, the button on my keys to lock my door has two functions. Uh, the first time I press it, it locks the door. And uh, the second time I press it, it lets everybody know, I don't really trust this neighborhood. <laughs> you guys know what I mean? You guys know what I mean? The area's a little bit too urban for your taste. You guys know what I'm saying? No? Okay. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> This is fun. I like this. Uh, I realized the other day, though, uh, it's really hard to be intimidating when you have the hiccups. I was, uh, I was walking down the street the other day, and I uh, accidentally bumped into this larger gentleman, and he got rid of me. Uh, I accidentally bumped into him. He got upset. He was like, hey, man, what's with a you go? And I was like, nah, dude, nah. How would you get the fuck up out of my face with that? Learn how to control your liquids, bitch. And then you beat the shit out of me because you can't talk to bigger people like that in real life. <laughs> True story. Um, hiccups are like life's radio edit, you know? <laughs> Speaking of radio edit, um, you guys, anybody, fans of rap music in the audience tonight? Fans of rap? Rap fans? I like old school rap. Who's your favorite rapper, man? 
Jay Z. He he's still in the he's still in the game apparently. <laughs> Nas, what's your favorite album? Is the one with it when it's called the N word? <laughs> no. It's called Untitled, but we all know what it means. <laughs> no. Uh, I like rap music. I just uh I just hate whenever a rapper takes himself too seriously. And um, this song doesn't really reflect that. You know what I mean? I was listening to this song the other day, and you know it had like the real, you know, serious talk down in the beginning. And the guy was just like, "Yeah, this next song goes out to my mom who struggled to raise me as a single parent. This one's for you, mom." And then like the song would start, and he's just like, "Yo, we got a bitch with a champagne bottle." Like, hold up, what? <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. Apparently, somebody does have father issues. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Rap music. That's funny. <laughs> more and more. You guys still in the building tonight? That's what yeah, I like. Buddy. I don't know. I um. Black History Month is uh, is here, right, guys? Black History Month is here. When I wrote this joke. Um, <laughs> I, uh, uh, I'm not sure, uh, how you guys think the civil rights movement started? Uh, I dropped out of college, but this is my very fly theory about it. <laughs> uh, like all business meetings that happen at a Golden Corral, and, <laughs> and a guy stood up and was like, all right guys, listen up, uh, apparently white people don't like black people, so we gotta start a little movement, try, you know, even things out a bit. Uh, first things first, uh, Rosa Parks, you gotta start taking the bus. And Rosa Parks just looks at him and he's just like, yeah, but like, I want a car though. He's like, yeah, you don't do that anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you guys just have to blah, 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 blah. Guys, I've been drinking. I'm in a bar. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, who's next up on the list? Uh, Nelson, man, Nelson, are you in here? Nelson, uh, we need you to go to Africa for a little bit. Nelson's just like, all right, cool. I get to go to Africa. Go back to the motherland. I get it. How long I got to go to Africa for? Uh, you got to go to Africa for about 27 years and you have to go to prison. And Nelson's just like, what the fuck, man? The park has to sit on a goddamn bus. He's like, listen, man, I don't make the rules. Don't yell at me. <laughs> in comes George Washington Carver. Hey, guys, I got some really cool idea how we can use peanuts. Man, shut the fuck up, George Washington Carver. Never get the fuck about them dumbass peanuts, man. She's a dumbass down. George Washington Carver's just like, oh, but guys, what about starch? <laughs> it's a history joke. <laughs> Thank you, Bloomingdale. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, uh, I made some black history uh, not too long ago. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, got, uh, I reached a new low point in my life not too long ago. Um, I got really drunk and I, uh, I drove to a checkers. Uh, that's not the low point yet. Uh, <laughs> I got really drunk one night and I drove to a checkers and I proceeded to pass out. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, checkers has a strict no sleeping policy there. <laughs> uh, and I don't know if you guys also don't know this, but uh, one of the worst ways to be woken up from your sleep is to a grown man just banging on your car window, just being like, hey man, you at checkers. <laughs> I woke up and I didn't know what to do. I was like, ah, and I just drove off. And I was driving, I just looked over to the side, I was like, oh shit, I didn't even get anything. <laughs> so I had to drive the car all the way back around the drive-thru. As soon as I got back in line, I passed out again. Don't look at me like that, I don't have a problem. Don't judge me. You still have some 16. I can live my life how I want to. <laughs> but uh, that day, I realized though, one of the second worst ways to be walking up from your sleep, it is still that same man just banging on your car window, just being like, Hey man, I really think you need to get your life together, man. <laughs> you gotta live this no more. There's a McDonald's up the street. Come on, man. They got better deals and everything. <laughs> that joke is called Last Night. <laughs> no. That's one. Wormhole, you guys okay? You guys all right? What's up? You guys feeling good? You guys, you guys trying to get fucked up tonight? What's up? You guys got any glue? Let's get fucked up. I don't give a shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, warning, uh, this next joke is just for me. Uh, <laughs> I think the people that make a pre-sun are working with the people that make crack. 
Ca Capri Sun is so delicious that after I finish an entire box of Capri Sun, I'm just left looking at the box, just like, I guess I gotta suck some more dick for some Capri Sun now. <laughs> know what you guys are thinking. Chris, in that joke, you have really implied that you just sucked dick previously for Capri Sun. And I want you guys to know it's 2016, don't you fucking judge me, okay? I'm gonna set this imaginary box down now. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys, I warned you, that joke was just from you, okay? <laughs> All right, I feel like there's a lot of tension in the room, like I said, hey, you guys have never been to third grade before? No, no, just me, cool. <laughs> This is a nice segue. Uh, you guys like church? <laughs> I've never been to church before. Uh, I used to go to church. Uh, I, I, I had to stop going to church. I didn't like church. I, uh, because church has this thing there. Uh, they do this thing called tithes there at church. And tithes is whenever you uh, give 10% of whatever you earn that week to the church. You know what I mean? And I always thought that was a little bit weird because I always like wrapped it up in this whole emotional thing. You know, it's always like, every time I went to church, there's just a guy yelling at me. He's like, son, do you believe in God? And I'm like, yeah, man, I believe in God. But do you believe that Jesus Christ and died for your sins? I'm like, yeah, I, th I think he did that. When do you want to be accepted? <laughs> Into his holy kingdom. I'm like, yeah, man, I do. He's like, cool. Uh, put in a cool $20 and I'll put in a good word for you. I'm like, huddle, what? Doesn't make any sense. Heaven has a cover fee? That makes no sense to me at all. It is weird. Somebody has to. Somebody has to. I like you guys. So sure. no, this is fun. I don't know. I'm a I'm a black person. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm black, but like I don't act it. You know what I mean? I don't. Was that even words? <laughs> I'm black, but I don't act like that. I, I don't act black until it comes to like certain things like food. You know what I mean? Like I get really excited when I like see new food. I was hanging out with some of my white friends the other day, and uh, my white friend was just like, "Hey, Chris, let's get something to eat." Cause that's what white people sound like to me. <laughs> so like, I got in this car. We drove to the drive-through at McDonald's, and uh, I'm sitting in the back seat. And I look out the window, and I, I had noticed that the McRib was back. And um, I had just immediately lost all my shit. I was like, oh shit, the McRib bag? Oh, McDonald's has got the game fucked up, son! What is that? Like, what the fuck? God damn! <laughs> so I don't have any more white friends now. Um, <laughs> well, let's. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh,. Just got back from the doctor not too long ago. I know. Uh, found out I have this terribly rare disease. <laughs> Sorry, two questions. Uh, <laughs> one, how you doing? You doing all right? <laughs> no, you're all right. <laughs> you like that. No. I got this really rare disease. It's, uh, it's called Still Look Like Your 16ism. It's a disease where you look like an extra on That's So Raven. It's a disease where you look like the friend from Ned's Declassified. It's a disease where you look like the puppet from Cousin Skeeter. It's a disease where you look like both Keenan and Kel. It's a disease where you look like the kid in the wheelchair and Malcolm in the middle. This is a disease where I could continue on and on with this joke, but nobody would get the references I would make. <laughs> That's cool. All right. So, uh, guys, uh, you got to support the troops. Nice meeting right, you. Guys, give it up for the troops, you guys. You got to support the troops. Give it up for the troops. They're working hard for us overseas. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You guys got moms in here. Anybody have a mother? Give it up for moms. You know, it's a tough job. Somebody's got to do it. Give it up for moms. You know what I'm saying? You guys like breathing? Give it up for oxygen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How much more time do I got? Give it up for fucking everything. <laughs> no, but um, despite looking like I'm 16 years old, I'm actually a 21-year-old adult male. Uh, 
Uh, I'm 21 years old, but like it's kind of like it's kind of scary for me, mostly because I had my midlife crisis when I was 11. <laughs> me, her, and this together. <laughs> it's a math joke. <laughs> I got it. I do math. <laughs> this is fun. This is stupid. I don't know. I saw a trailer park the other day. It was called New Hope, but it seemed like everybody's last. <laughs> they say that ignorance is bliss, but I don't get it. <laughs> I know. See a lot of wrinkled people around here. Uh, see a lot of wrinkled people, and whenever somebody sees somebody's wrinkled, we automatically assume that they're old. Maybe they're not old. Maybe they just take really long baths. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. To my credit, I wrote that joke when I was 17. <laughs> it was whatever. Yeah. I'm different from a lot of people, though. Uh, no people that have fears of dying alone or dying and not doing something with their life. You know what I mean? Me, personally, I have fears of dying without being able to clear my internet history. Guys, know what I mean? I just think it'd be pretty hard to explain. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I just think it'd be pretty hard to explain watch my fat wife eat cereal dot edu. You know what I mean? Love it. You know what I mean? Love it. Don't judge me. It's an educational website, okay? <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I um, just got out of a relationship not too long ago. Uh, I'm not too heartbroken about it though, you know what I mean? It's a mutual split between us. Uh, we both just mutually decided that we didn't want to speak to me anymore, so. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. You're very supportive and also hostile to me tonight. It's weird. <laughs> it's all love. I appreciate that, ma'am. Uh, I've been on Tinder though. You guys been on the Tind the, the Tinders? <laughs> Uh, I've been using Tinder, uh, and I've just been researching, um, you know, which, which, which do ladies prefer more? You know, uh, green apple or blue raspberry? Ma'am, what do you prefer, green apple or blue raspberry? Both. Both? All right, ma'am, what about you, green apple or blue raspberry? Uh, both. Blue raspberry. Turns out that 100% uh, of them did not respond, so. <laughs> yeah. Leave you guys with this one, though. Um, you know what I really feel bad for? Uh, I feel bad for like the nice guy back in the 1400s, you know what I mean? Just the guy who had to talk to his like secret admirer via a carrier pigeon, you know what I mean? Just every day he would like pen, pen her a note, just like, oh my dearest, your arm is a rose, or whatever bullshit they said back then. And he'll take the note, you know, tie it to the pigeon, and then uh, send the pigeon off. <laughs> Then three months would go by, the pigeon would come back, God takes a note, and he looks at it, and all it reads is, new pigeon, who dis? <laughs> God just looks at it, God damn it, not again. All right, guys, I appreciate it. You guys have a great night, okay? That was Chris's lame, everyone, give it, give it up, everyone. That was Chris's lame! This is Comedy Planet, and you can watch the live stream at wormholebar.com slash livestream. Are you ready for your final comedian of the night? Woo! This guy is so funny. Really quick, give it up for yourselves, Wormhole. Woo! We do this every first Saturday. Make sure you come out. We have actually a, the Dopey Boys Comedy Tour uh, next month. That's going to be dope. But right now, your final headliner for the night. He came all the way here from Atlanta, so show him as much love as you've shown everyone else. Give it up for Mr. David Perdue! Yeah. One more time for your host. Give it up one more time. One more time. Yes. Y'all are here. Yes. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here. What's wrong with you? No. Uh, I like y'all, man. Give it up for yourselves, man, for just coming out. Supporting live comedy, that's awesome, man. Like, for real, that's dope. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was my final Black History Month present, is what that was. Uh, you don't want me to do well. 
I'm not gonna chuck that at all. Uh, no, yeah, y'all are good looking people. You guys look like you have like, like especially this, you guys look like you have front and backyard. So that's what's up. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I like that. I like that about you. Y'all are like good people. Y'all good people? Yeah? I like this dude's response like, nah, I'm gonna fuck up. Like, he just shook his head no real quick. Like, I don't know about these angels, but I fuck shit up. And I like that about you, sir. I like that about you. I, I don't know. If it's 20, it's a new year. I mean, we're like three months in now. I think you guys are caught up. Like, it's a new year. Is anybody still, like, holding on New Year's, like, resolutions? Anybody still going to the gym? Being, clap it up if you're, like, holding on to your resolutions. You're still doing it. Cool. It's like three overachievers in here. That's what's up. <laughs> Just people out here just being extra. Get out of here. Uh, I don't. I'll be honest, guys. I don't have. I don't have any. I don't have any goals in 2016. I have zero goals. I had nothing I wanted to change. Uh, that is because I achieved all my goals last year. I did. I did everything I wanted to do last year. So I have nothing. Like I have nothing to do now. You know what I mean? Anybody else have that problem? Just did everything. Everything. You all are just still working. Look at you guys. Lazy. I did everything I wanted to do. Some of you are like. What could have been your goals if you have no goals? Or like how low are your goals? I'll tell you. Uh, when I started comedy, I had one goal. Uh, I, my goal was to uh, be more loved than Bill Cosby. And then, <laughs> shit, it's crazy. Like last year, it was like he knew my dreams. He was like, yo, it's a kid out there in Atlanta right now that's got a dream to be more loved than me. So I'm gonna fuck up my life. And it's like he threw me an alley-oop and I caught it and dunked it. You know what I mean? Mm, it's beautiful. And like, now, like, I don't know what to do with myself now. This is like, everything I do from this point on is just for like kicks and goos. Like I don't care anymore. Like I've done it all. You know, anybody have done it all? You'll get there too. What was your, what was your resolution? Cause you're still doing it. What's your goal? Where were you? You clapped. Don't act like you didn't clap earlier. I saw you clap. What did you clap about? <laughs> you can't kid with that because we all think it's funny, but that, the problem is he does not. <laughs> and you don't have to go home with everybody else. <laughs> so, oh man. What, but what, what was your, what was your, what was your, you had a resolution this year? No, no, no. Well, hold on real quick, real quick, before we get lost. What was your goal? You didn't have one? To be a better, so you just made that up for me just now. She, she was lying. She tried to make all of us feel bad. Like, yeah, I'm still doing my thing, and you just made it up real quick. You're just like the rest of us. You're a fuck up, too. Embrace it, is what I'm saying. Embrace it. None of us in here are good people. It's Saturday night. We're in this place listening to me talk. You're not a good person if you're doing that. You could be doing other things. We'll get there. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, I don't know. I just, I recently went through a, uh, I went through a breakup and simultaneously got a new job. So it's very stressful for me right now. Very stressful. Right now. Yeah, I broke up with this girl and then I got a new job as a uh, social media investigator. Anybody heard about that job? <laughs> you know about that? Like when you break up with somebody, you check everything that they've ever been on all the time. Anybody else? The hours are weird. Like it's just... <laughs> You never know when you get called in, but you, you be ready. Like, you're like, why is he liking that picture? Is this the dude? This is the dude, and you just get real upset. Don't feel bad for me. Some of y'all, like, felt bad for me. Don't feel bad for me. I'm cute, so I'll be, I will be fine. I'll be fine. I'm a very attractive, chubby man. America's ready for me. I'm good. I'm so good. Um, I was recently, I was in uh, Athens, Georgia, college town. Anybody fans of that place? Yeah? I don't, I didn't like it. <laughs> I've been, not that I didn't like Athens, Athens is cool. I've been there numerous times. Um, here's what I realized. I was in a bar in Athens and I had a moment where I realized that I was older than everybody. That is the worst, yeah, right? It's the worst feeling when you're like, oh, oh, you still smell like placenta, all of you. <laughs> None of you have real problems, you know, like you just want to fight them. I was in a bar in Athens and I, you realize you get older because you realize like, you hate other people's fun. Like, that's one of the indicators of getting older. You're like, what type of fun is that shit? Like, you just get mad <laughs> at other people's fun. I got mad. I was, I was in this bar in Athens, and I got real mad. And I, I probably shouldn't have got mad, but I did. I got mad because I'm minding my business. And I, again, I'm in Athens, so I'm the only black person in this bar. Uh, <laughs> and that's just how Athens works. They're like, we don't want but one at a time. And so I was, I was selected to go into Athens as the representative of black people, and I was hanging out. Right? And I'm hanging out at this bar, 
And again, a sea of just young, just pale-faced white kids who, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like you, you guys are like, you, okay. Here's what happened. I'm sitting there minding my business, and I look over to my right, and I see this couple together. I don't have a problem with couples being together. Some of you are couples together. This is how couples should be. Just relaxed and chill and having fun. This couple, there's music playing, and I, what I see is this couple, uh, I see this girl twerking on this dude, which, yeah, hey, exactly. I'm cool with twerking. I'm all about to twerk. I'm like free to twerk, do that. Wow, but okay, if I'm fair though, her twerk looked like, oh. <sighs> it kind of looked like, <laughs> you ever seen like a, a baby deer being born? Right? Now, like you see it on Nature. Now, if you ever get the chance, put it in, re like, rewind it. So, like, real fast. So, like, the, the deer kind of goes back in. So, it's like, like that. That's what she looked like she was doing on this poor gentleman, right? That didn't make me mad. What made me mad was while she was doing this action or whatever with just legs. It was all legs. This is weird. While she's doing this, simultaneously, she's trying to make out with this dude. Do you guys know how bodies work? Uh, you can't do this and that, whatever. You can't do them at the same time. Like, she looked like she was in danger. She looked like she was hurt. And I was so, I got so mad that like, I didn't, I forgot where I was. I didn't give a damn about protocol or any of that shit or the court, I didn't care. This is what I said. I just, I, I'm buying my business, drinking my drink. I see it and I go, hey, hey, pick one. You can't do them both at the same damn time. Shit! You're gonna kill her! You're gonna kill her! She's gonna break her neck! Fucking with you! You don't even know how to handle a twerk, dude! Stop! Pick one! She's gonna die! And if she dies right here, guess what? I'm the only black dude in this bar. Who's gonna get to blame me? Get the fuck out of here! Like, I was so... I was so mad at them. I shouldn't have been. Like, they were having fun. But I just... I don't know. I just got... I got I'm too old, man. Like, I'm... And I'm not... Some of you are like, he keeps saying he's old but he has that same disease that last black guy had. <laughs> I do, I do. We have black does indeed not crack. Yes, uh, though I appear to be all of nine years old, I am actually just turned 29. So, I don't know why we're clapping about that. Oh, this dirt. You, I don't even feel like that means nothing to me because I will look like this into infinity. Like I will die looking as cute as I am now. I've looked like this since I was 11, I'm cool with it. Like this, I feel like I look so young, like this disturbs some people, just. They're like, why is this young child drinking beer? <laughs> I, I, am, I am getting older. This is, this is another thing that actually happened at this bar. This is, this, is, this is like, I don't even know if this is an achievement or what, this is just a moment in time where I realized something and it was a weird thing I realized. So I was in Athens, I was doing a show in Athens. It did fairly well. Enough to where like people kind of recognize me after the show, which was cool. It's always cool. People are like, hey man, you're the dude who did the thing, right? And as I'm in this bar, I'm just dancing, minding my business, and it's like this young white girl sees me. She's not that young. She's like my ish age. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm not gonna get in too much trouble if something go down, right? <laughs> and she sees me. She comes across towards me, and then she just like kisses me. She just kisses me, and yeah, which is cool. The reason why I say like it's it was it was cool is because in the moment it happened, I realized immediately that this was the first white woman I had kissed in over 20 years. Okay, 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 not ever. Here's here's the all right, here's the thing. You're like, how does he know the time? I'll tell you why I know. The last time I kissed a young white girl, I was in second grade. It was back in 95, and it was a girl who I kissed. At nap time, I kissed her, because you used to stay at nap time back there in the second grade. Second grade, yeah, I was in a slow class, don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, she's like, that doesn't add up. Listen, I, I'm, I made it, you should be happy for me. Like, I shouldn't be here right now. What I'm trying to say is, it was 20 years ago, I remember it because I kissed her, and then after night time, she like got up and was like, David kissed me, and then I got like embarrassed. And then, uh, the only reason why I got embarrassed, it wasn't embarrassed because I kissed her. If you remember what was going on 20 years ago, that was the same time as the OJ trial. <laughs> so, so like, I'm a young kid and all I hear from adults is like, he shouldn't have been fucking with them white girls. And like, <laughs> that's, 
that's all that's going through my head when she's in front of people like, yeah, he kissed me. I was like, I should be fighting with these white girls. Like in second grade. I just freaked out. And I was like, I don't know this bitch. I don't know where she is. I never touched her. The gloves is not fit. Must have quit. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no knives. No. Uh... So for 20 years, I just was like listening to that, that second grade kids. Like, don't be fucking with the white girls. And then after Georgia two weeks ago, she just happened and like what I'm trying to say the joke is not about like racism or anything like that it's, it is more so about progress like you gotta let old shit die you know what I mean like you can't let old racist bullshit cloud you down and now I'm like yo so many white girls I need to be kissing like I've missed time not kissing white women it was just it was cool for me that was for me that was for me like I, I it's like I, I like I jumped over a hurdle that I didn't know I had until that moment I'm very proud of myself for that uh, and, and mind you, it was in Black History Month. That's what made it pretty cool. I was like, look, I am Black History. I did it. I did it. This is King's dream realized. Uh, is this, can I be real? All right, so this is not, a, this is not part of the So like, I got a number, like we're texting back and forth because like, that's what you do when you meet people and stuff. I don't know if I can handle, uh, like, it's a, I've never texted anybody like this before. What I mean is within two weeks of these text messages and stuff like that, back and forth, like, I've already have several pictures of, like, mangled dicks that she sent me. I don't know what that means. Anybody want to translate what that means? That never happened when I dated a black girl. You just get, like, I don't know, like a tip pick or something like that. This girl's like, what do you think about this? this is, I'm like, that is, a, that is a mangled dick. Like, where? I think she wants to, like, chop me up and something like that. I don't know. I need to. Some just save me. <laughs> I'm in trouble. If she asked me to put the lotion on what? I don't know how to do that. I'm black. We always put the lotion on. <laughs> Particularly cocoa butter. Uh, oh, she's... Yeah, you know about that cocoa butter. Um, all right. What else I want to talk to you guys about? I, um... Uh, what else I want... I don't know. I, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here because this is like a... Honestly, I'm happy to be this place because there's adequate parking. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's just easy to park here and that makes me happy because a lot of times I have to do shows in like downtown Atlanta and like it's hard to park there. You know what I'm talking about? And like, I don't know if you're familiar, but like, I don't know if you guys have them, but like, there are always these guys in like any city, these guys that like, I don't think work for the city. You know what I mean? But they're like, they're always there to help you park. Do you guys have these guys here? Okay, some of you are familiar with crackheads, awesome. <laughs> uh, we have so many, you guys want some? <laughs> There's so many in Atlanta, one time, I was trying to park and this dude was like helping me park and he was doing like a pretty good job of helping me park. And then all of a sudden this dude just starts yelling at me. This grown man just started yelling at me. And I don't know what he's saying. So I rolled my window down halfway because like we all know not to roll your window all the way down on a crackhead, right? We know that? Yeah, yeah? okay. I rolled it down halfway and this is what a grown man was yelling at me, another grown man. I can't make this up. This is what the dude says. Uh, he just goes, uh, hey, you with the sexy mouth. When you look at that car, why don't you come here and holler at me? <laughs> what? <laughs> he called me a sexy mouth, people. Um, I never even heard those two words put together, sexy and mouth. I heard sexy eyes, sexy lips. You know what I mean? Sexy mouth. I was taking them back. I was like, um, first of all, sir, why not my whole face, right? Like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it was a good looking day for me. I need you to recognize that my eyelashes are on fleek. They are. I know how I look. Um, let me just say this. That was my, uh, that was my first time ever in life getting hollered at by a gentleman. And uh, let me just say this, ladies. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Jesus Christ, did I know that's what that felt like? Man, so aggressive. Uh, here's the worst part about that, okay? I am, I'm not a gay man, however, I feel like I am a solid seven if I were to be gay. And if I'm honest, uh, that dude was like a four at best. And if I'm even more honest, I just feel like I was deserving of a much better holler than that. Right? Like, you ever, like, you ever had like a dude holler at you? You're like, ugh, how dare you? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're not on my level, boo. Like, that's all I wanted to say to him. Like, nah, dude, you know? Like a seven, like there's nothing special about a seven, right? There's nothing special. But like like a four, like a seven is just a regular ass lane, right? Just regular shit, you know what I mean? Basic regular seven shit. But like a four, 
the lane could best be described as like a cul-de-sac. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, you're not going anywhere, dude. You have no right. You have no right howling all this sexy sevenness. I'm out of your lane. So I, I believe in order. So what I did is roll my window down to yell at this dude. I was just like, hey, hey, bro. Don't, uh, don't go chasing waterfalls, dude. <laughs> nah, you, you, uh, you stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. I did, I said that. If you caught that reference, high five yourself. You are either black or have a black friend, that's awesome. <laughs> we can bang your head bounce after the show if you like. I seen a rainbow. No, I'm not gonna rap. I'm not gonna rap the whole shit. <laughs> I don't know, I, um, I, I did that joke one time and I had a young lady come to me after and she was like, uh, are you, like, that's like a very progressive type joke. Like, you must consider yourself like a feminist. Right? And I was just like, nah, I don't do that. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because, like, I don't, I can't claim somebody else's shit. Like, this doesn't feel right to do that. Like, I'm not, I'm not anti-women at all. Like, I think women, I agree with most things feminists say. Uh, and so, but as, you know what I mean? Like, do you. I just can't claim myself as a feminist. Because if I hear, when I hear dudes say they're feminists, they just remind me how I feel when I hear white people say they're, like, African-American studies majors. You know what I mean? He's like, what are you up to? What's this about? Why are you doing this? Who's this for? You know? I don't know. There was a moment where I almost became a feminist. Every dude should have this moment where you just start respecting women a little bit more because some shit happened to you. All right. So the, the club that I go to a lot in Atlanta is across the street from a, a male gay bar, right? A black male gay bar, right? So I park my car sometimes over there because it's the lot where you park to go to the club, right? After a show, I'm walking to my car, minding my own damn business, right? And I pass this dude who could only be described as like, I don't know, like the son of Dolomite. You know what I mean? Like the son of some great African warrior. You know what I mean? Like just this big, swole dude. And I pass him, minding my damn business. And as soon as I walk by him, I can hear him in the back go, mm-hmm. And I turn back and he's doing this with his stomach. And he's looking me up and down. And I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I was like, who's gonna walk me to my car right now? Like this, <laughs> is, this what, is this what women deal with? This is some bullshit. Like, uh, I don't like this at all. Like, uh. And then this is when I knew, this is when it became real to me. Like I hear women talk about this, but my first instinct when that happened, I grabbed my keys and I did that. You know that little, I had that little, that little one wolf ring claw y'all women do when you think you're gonna fight somebody else, you put that little one wolf ring claw, like I will fuck up your eyeballs if you come over here messing with me. I got this little wolf ring claw, I will fuck up your one eyeball and then see what happens after that. I did, I walked around my whole car with this little one wolf ring claw. I, was like, I will poke you right in the eyeball. You know how I did not realize how stupid that is like that. You can't. You can't just hit somebody in the eyeball. Like, that is, you have to be a real ninja. Like, to do that, that is some precise shit. What I'm trying to say, if that dude wanted me, he would have had me. There was nothing I could do about it. He was in shape. Like, I thought about this. I was like, if I ran where I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get out of breath in three seconds. Like, this dude is clearly always in the gym looking for people like me to fuck with. I don't know. That's when I almost became a feminist. But then when I got to my car and locked my doors real quick, I was like, fuck these bitches. And I just kept driving. <laughs> Uh, Y'all are silly for laughing at that. But I like you. Um, I don't know. I, uh, I had this weird thing happen to me. This is, ladies, clap it up if you're like, you, you're like you, you see a fella and you go holler at him. Clap it up if you're that type of woman. Like, you don't, you don't abide by like, those old norms. You like, wait for a dude. If you see a dude, you're like, hey, I want to holler at a dude, buy him a drink. Clap it up if you're one of those ladies. This is going to be a rough night for me then. Uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, <laughs> I, I had a, oh, is there, is there, is there one? Okay, come on, that's what I'm talking about. Good, good. I um, I I thought I had a moment where like that happened. I was uh, I was I was uh, I got a Facebook message late at night, like at midnight actually, from a young lady, and she messaged me. She said uh, she faced me. She said hey, and then I replied back on Facebook. This is at midnight. I go hey, <laughs> uh, because I have game. Uh, <laughs> I do. You see, you saw the game. You saw the game. And I said that, and then she goes, hey, you remind me of my cousin. I was like, that is an 11 uh, a.m. conversation. That is not a, that's not a 12 midnight conversation. I got curious. I was like, yeah? And she said, yeah. Go to her Facebook page and tell me if you look like her. 
I was like, I'll punch you in the face with my Wolverine claw, talking that bullshit. Ah! She fucked up everything. I was like, I thought this was a midnight booty call. This is not what that was at all. But I got curious. I did. I got curious. And I went to this page. And damn it, if I don't look just like this young lady. Uh, oh, I think we were wearing the same shirt and everything. It was crazy. I was like, this bitch is taking up all my shirts at Kohl's. That's why I can't find my size. You know, I like them big chested shirts. Taking up my shits. Uh, no, and then I, like, I go look through all her pages. Like, I looked through all her pictures and shit like that, and I noticed, like, every picture she has, she has, like, a gorgeous, like, model type on her arm, right? Like, several. Like, she just runs through them, apparently, right? Like, she's... And as I'm looking at these pictures, I'm just in shock. I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't even know our face could do that. <laughs> like, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I, how... Like, I had to message her, like, what are you doing with your face? Because I have a very similar face. I don't know if you can tell, but I don't have any of these pictures. And then she was like, oh, I got a personality. And I was like, fuck that shit. Nobody's trying to, nobody's trying to talk to these women. No, I'm just playing. I, um, uh, like Darius said, I came, I came, I'm from Atlanta. Well, technically, I mean, you, if you can read, I'm from Jonesboro, Georgia. Anybody familiar with Jonesboro, Georgia? Just because you say it doesn't know, I don't know if you know it about it. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't know about it. Here's how you know. Yo, so you don't know shit, uh, apparently, based off everybody else said. I, I, okay, so I wear this, and it's weird, because, like, it is Jonesboro, Georgia, but everybody who sees it, like, Jonesboro, Arkansas? And I just be like, no, even shittier. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's actually worse than the one in Arkansas. Can you believe it? Um, Jonesboro is actually off of what they call uh, Terra, Terra Boulevard, right? If anybody's familiar with cinema, you know the word Terra, gone with the wind. Exactly. Jonesboro is known for two things. Gone with the wind, and you know the second one? No, meth. It's known for meth. <laughs> and frankly, my dear, no one gives a damn about the first thing. Everybody there is about meth. It's a terrible place. <laughs> it is. It is a, Jonesboro is like a, it's a shitty place. It didn't used to be shitty, like when, when they were running through it and, and fucking going to wind times, everybody was happy, except if you look like me. But other than that, like it was... He was running around on horses and shit, having a good time, right? And now, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, we're doing a history lesson. Now they burned it from there all the way to here, apparently. Anyway. All right, I don't have time for this TED talk about history and shit. I've got jokes to tell you, no. Yeah, all right, so Jonesboro is, it is like, it, the neighborhood, I would say, is going through, like, a transitional period. You know, like, you know how people talk about neighborhoods go through transitions? But it's like... But it's not like a good, you know about the good transitions, right? You might know about the good transitions. Like the good transitions is like, like you chilling with your homeboys, you just outside chilling, and all of a sudden you see like a white lady jogging. You're like, where the fuck do we get these white ladies from? Damn, I didn't even know we had a white lady. Good for our neighborhood, that's what's up. <laughs> and then the next day there's like another white lady jogging with her. We're like, damn, we got two white ladies. What the fuck is happening? That is crazy. And they got matching outfits, that's crazy. Then the third day, it's like a white lady jogging with a baby stroll. Like, damn, this white lady didn't already had a baby. We got three white ladies and two babies. And you try asking questions like, where the men at? Like, there's no men. And then you turn around, and it was, all this jogging was a distraction because the men have built amazing houses behind your back. Like, damn, where this big ass house come from? And he's like, ah, gentrification, gotcha, bitch. And get the fuck out of our neighborhood. <laughs> it's ours now. You don't know what to do with it. Get the fuck out. <laughs> That's not the transition my neighborhood is going through. Jonesboro is going through this type of transition, all right? In Jonesboro, Georgia, on Terra Boulevard, there used to be a Publix supermarket, right? You guys have Publix here, right? Okay, if you know anything about supermarket, Publix is the best one, right? It's the bougie one. It's the good one. How do I know that? Because most of them close at 10 o'clock on the dot. What does that say about Publix? That says, look, what they're saying is, look, if you don't get your shit by 10 p.m., take that bullshit over to Kroger's. Nobody got time <laughs> for that ratchet shit. If you didn't get this delicious ass sub sandwich by 10 p.m., that's your ass. Take that bullshit and get that leftover salami meat at Kroger's and deal with that badass, t terrible ass uh, fucking person at the, you know what I'm talking about. All Kroger's have the same one toothed person working one of the registers just angry at you for no reason. Like, bitch, I didn't choose this for you. Like, <laughs> it's 3 p.m. It's 3 a.m. Nobody asked you to be here. You could be at Publix. You should plot yourself. 
And maybe you'll be somebody who can work in Publix one day. Nobody asks you to not ring up my fruits and vegetables that way. Like, I just get upset. I get so angry. So it used to be a Publix in the neighborhood. It used to be a Publix in the neighborhood, and that Publix is there no more. Do you know what has replaced the Publix in my neighborhood? Look at all you are like, ah, another uh, place. No, you know what's replaced it? A beauty supply store. Do you understand what my neighborhood decided to do? It was like, you know them fruits and vegetables that you love so much? Well, how about some discounted weave? <laughs> Maybe some cool ass brushes for make your hair look cool as shit. That's why I got my hair like this, cause I got cool ass, right? I look good, right? Yeah, you know what I would like more than to look cool? is a vegetable. There's no more vegetables in my neighborhood because people want to sell me discounted weaves and shit. It's the worst place ever. I don't know why I still live there. It's terrible, man. I can't go into Kroger, too. I hate it so much. They don't respect me there. I don't like it. They don't respect me. Every time I go there, they look like I'm not supposed to be there. I'm like, look, I know I have to pick up my cookies off the ground and buy them. Like, that's the only way you can get them, you know? Everything, this doesn't feel like, maybe it's just my Kroger where everything I buy, I have to pick it up off the ground and then purchase it. Like, I'm like, I don't think it's supposed to be here, but it's the only one. <laughs> I pick it up and take it to the register. They're like, man, you get a, did I get a discount for this? I'm like, no, you don't. You're a shitty person, too, just like the rest of us. And it, they overcharge you, don't you? Don't they? And then, I ain't gonna lie, though. The only good thing about Kroger is, like, when you think, like, some shit is about to be real expensive, and they be like, yeah, your bill is $120. And then you pull out that Kroger Plus card, like, no, it ain't, bitch. Bam! <laughs> Discount my shit, and then he's like, ah, your shit is $85. And that's not as much as I thought, but I'll take it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what else I want to talk to you guys about? I don't know. I like, I like you guys as a people. As a people. You know what I mean? Like, as a, like, Savannah people. As a people. Y'all are okay. Like, I don't, I don't feel like, it. all right, you like yourself. You li I like the way you like yourself. I like the way you like yourself. Because you were like, if nobody else claps for us, I will. I like that. You're like the, the, the crowd cheerleader, and I appreciate that. Yeah. What's your name? Lynn, that's a cool name. That's a cool name. There's nothing else I'm gonna say about it. It's just a cool name. Um, I don't know. I had, I had, I don't know. I had other things I want to talk to you guys about, but I didn't want to. Like I've been here. Like I, I like coming here and like giving y'all like different shit. I don't know. Has anybody ever seen me before? You seen a couple of you in the back have seen me before. And so none of you have seen me before. So I could have just did old shit and have been perfectly fine. And then you would have been like, he is funny as fuck, instead of now being like, he is moderately hilarious. Uh, I've seen better, he was okay. I think he's holding back, no. Um, I will say this, I did before, oh, I need to do this. I need to get like a haircut. Not like, and I'm gonna keep my hair the way it is. I like the way my hair is. I just need to find a new barber. No, I'm, I know I'm good, but like my barber is weird. Anybody here deal with a weird, anybody, first of all, anybody here go to like a black barber shop? All the time? Take off the hat real quick, I just gotta see. Yeah. Oh, you do not, wait. Nah, 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 I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that, nope, nope, nope. Cause if you, all white dudes that go to the black barbershop look like Justin Timberlake, and that's not what you look like. <laughs> You're not gonna trick me. You're not gonna trick me. Uh, I, don't, I, need to, I need to go to a new barbershop. My barber's very weird, and I say weird, all barbers are weird, not even just black barbers. All barbers are weird. They're very like hypersexual, like hyper masculine environments. You know what I mean? Like places you don't want to take no woman that you care about because they're going to hear some shit. You know what I mean? Like one time my barber was cutting my hair and like a pregnant lady walked by the outside of the barbershop. And when I say pregnant, like she was like eight ish months pregnant. You know what I mean? Like, like that was like a little baby leg hanging out type pregnant. Like that's how pregnant she was, right? And so. As my barber's coming here, she sees this lady, and she's very pretty. And my barber stops cutting my hair to yell, God damn, I can't wait till she get unpregnant so I can fuck that. Uh. What? Un unpregnant is what he said. This dude is making up words <laughs> with sharp objects near my head. Like, that's, I was like, you can't, we got to put time out, dude. You don't get to do that. Uh, <laughs> like, you always hear some shit at the barbershop, right? One time, my barber posed a very weird question to the entire barbershop. This dude just goes, Yo, 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 real quick, real quick, question, question, question. Would you rather your son be gay or on crack? I was like, that is a weird ass question. I was like, ooh, please pick me. That'll be the easiest pop quiz I'll ever take, right? He didn't pick me first. He pointed to the dude next to me. He was like, what do you say, dude? 
And that dude was like, shit, get my son crack. I was like, oh no. <laughs> nah, dude, you failed the pop quiz, man. <laughs> no. And I was oh, it was open book. What are you doing, dude? That's not how it works. Uh, then I thought he's gonna pick me. No, he, he picks another dude. Another dude, he's like, what do you say? And that dude was like, hell yeah, get my son crack. Exact like, I'm be honest, both of them said it with such confidence that like for a split second, I thought crack had gotten better. <laughs> I did, I was sitting there like, damn, good for crack, that is crazy. Like, I know it was like, crack was like, it was real tough for crack in the 80s, but good for crack to get his shit together. I started looking up like, is crack a superfood now? I don't know about it, like, good for crack, damn, that's good. And then I started realizing there's a couple people in my family who I've been addicted to crack, and I don't know if my family's getting the bad shit, but I'm pretty sure that it does not do what these gentlemen think it does. So I was like, all right, somebody has to be an adult about this, and I said, hey, Seriously, we're gonna do gay or on crack? Is that the question? Like, have either of you taken a gander at either one of those communities? I don't know if you have, but the uh, gay community typically has both front and backyards. Uh, yes, yeah. They usually drive cars to work. Uh, yeah, and then most of them adopt little Asian babies and put them in real nice clothes. Yeah, I've seen TV, I know how gay works. Like, I know. I get it. All of which things people on crack don't do because they are too busy doing crack. You know what I mean? Like, it is a very time consuming habit. They don't have time to be doing all this other cool shit like working and adopting little Asian babies, right? They don't have time. Crack isn't consuming. So, I, like, obviously, they were like, what do you say then, Dave? And I was like, obviously, you know, if the options are gay or on crack, obviously, I'm going to, I'd rather my son be gay. Like, if those are the options, right? But, like, I get it. I get it. I told him I get it. Because uh, if my son, where to do crack? I don't know. He might then suck a dick for that crack. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't done the research on crack, but I heard that is a thing that people do. But I said this. I said, I stand before you gentlemen as an artist. And if my son is going to suck a dick, I want him to suck that dick because he loves that dick and not because of the poison. Thank you. That's what I said. That's what I thought the response I would get. No, that's not what happened. Not, like in, my, in the best case scenario, in my mind, they were gonna be like, damn, we fucked up, man. We've been thinking about this all wrong. Would you like to be a new civil rights leader? Like I thought something like that. I thought something like that was gonna happen. Like I would change hearts and minds. And they would like put me on their shoulders and then like call me like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 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 or whatever, whatever name they decided to come up with. No, that's not what happened. Here's what happened. My barber stops and looks at me and he just goes, hey dude, uh, what the hell is a gander? And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, you said I'm pregnant earlier. Uh, you're dumb, you're a dumb person. I don't know, and I can't even leave this barber. This is where I can't leave him, because I don't know, if you, if you have been to a barbershop, in a black barbershop, and you ever had to get a, you ever had to get a lineup in a black barbershop, clap it up if you know the feeling yeah. of getting like a crispy line. Yeah. So everybody's clapping up, even you who's lying, but I feel you maybe know a bit. Everybody who knows that feeling knows in order to get a crispy line, at some point, your barber, like they have to get up on you a little bit, like it's a little personal. And I don't know if it happens with everybody, I'm pretty sure it does, but at some point, like they put their balls on your arm a little bit, like, you know, just to get in close. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you sitting there, arm on the rest, and it's like, is that, a, is that a ball? That's a ball on my arm. And that's the price of beauty, a little ball on the arm, just to make sure that I look like I look like I look like now. You got to do that. So I just can't get rid of this dude. Like, I, I don't know. I guess I love that man. You know what I mean? Like, he keep me tight. He keep me tight. I don't know. I, um, I, we, exactly. We close as fuck. Got a ball on my arm. You my family now. You, he get invited to family reunions. He get to bring potato salad. He is close. We are good friends. Uh, that dude told me one time, I taped some shit for TV. And he was just like, hey, man, you taped some shit for TV? And I was like, yeah. He goes. I'm so proud of you, dog. And I was like, damn, now that we done crossed the threshold here. <laughs> you proud? You realize my own parents don't say that about me? Like, you, we need to hug this out, bro. Like, that's cool, man. Be proud of me. Uh, I don't know, I like, I like, <laughs> I like performing here. I like my haircut. Like, I do like my haircut, but like performing here, I had my homeboy say something very weird to me. And when I say weird, I give you an example of this homeboy, right? Uh, one time I told him I was gonna perform in Savannah, and he was just like, yo, Yo, you perform in front of like a lot of white people, huh? And I was like, yeah, so what? He was like, yo, how, how do you make white people laugh? <laughs> like, what do you do to make white people laugh? 
And I was just like, no, I don't do that. Uh, that's how you get fucked. That's how you get fucked by white bros. They're like, no, it's just, it's not gay, bro. It's not gay. It's just playing tag. That's weird. I don't do that. <laughs> no, he asked that question. It's a very weird question. And I told him the truth. I was like, yo, to get white people laugh is real easy. What I like to do is before I get on stage, it's just tickle them all. And <laughs> that's what I said. And he was like, word? And I was like, you're dumb. You're dumb. You're dumb. So the same homeboy said this to me, right? The same homeboy said this to me. He just goes, dude, like I fuck with your hair, man. That's dope. I like what you're doing with your haircut, but like, aren't you afraid to have that haircut? And I was like, hold on. I didn't even know people were afraid of haircuts. That's, that's a new thing to be paranoid about. He was like, nah, nah, nah. Like, aren't you afraid that like with that cool ass haircut that like white people are gonna pet you? I was like, what? And then, I don't know, like, it was a weird question. Like, it was a weird thing to say. But then I realized, like, I have a lot of, like, black women friends who tell these horror stories of, like, white women at work just, like, going through their hair and shit. So what I'm saying is, like, I get it, right? I get it. So what I'm saying to any of you before I leave, if any of you kind white women would like to pet me after the show, go for it, right? <laughs> go for it. Like, I know what I look like. I'm very cute. I, like, I put coconut oil in my hair. I smell like a birthday cake. I under... Stand the desire to do that. Go for it. Definitely pet. Here's why I say that. Uh, because in my 29 now years of living, what I've learned is that white people will protect shit that they can pet. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to be safe, guys. I wore a hoodie here. <laughs> I don't know you people. No, all right. Um, you guys have been an amazing crowd. Uh, make sure y'all keep supporting the show. Keep supporting comedy here in Savannah. Did you guys enjoy yourselves before I do all? Yeah? All right. Before I got here, I just want to say, uh, everybody, if you was going to fuck somebody tonight, do it good. Don't, don't, blame, like, don't blame me for a bad fuck. Like, man, that comedian sucked. I would have fucked you better, but you fucked up my rhythm. And if you wasn't going to fuck somebody tonight, See, this dude's gonna blame it on me. I already know, he's gonna be like, he started talking about that race shit, and I, I, my stroke is off, but she know, that shit been off. Uh, <laughs> all right, anyway guys, that is my time. My name is David Perdue, y'all have been awesome. Get over my time for y'all there. Everybody, that was David Perdue, give it up! You guys, that was Comedy Planet. Thank you for coming out. We do this every first Saturday, and you can always live stream it. Wormhole, bar.com slash live stream. How do you guys feel? Now, remember, the bar is still open, and we're going to have some live music, so hang out. Good night.